reading the description of the E-Verify program, which is what this bill pertains to, from the federal government's website, how you do with that program. It describes what E-Verify is and uh, why we have it and who uses it. E-Verify is an internet-based system that compares information from an employee's form I-9 employment eligibility verification to data from the U.S. Department of Homeland Security and Social Security Administration records to confirm employment eligibility. Why do people come to the United States illegally? They come here to work. The public can and should choose to reward companies that follow the law and employ a legal workforce. The U.S. Department of Homeland Security is working to stop unauthorized employment. By using E-Verify to determine the employment eligibility of their employees, companies become part of the solution in addressing this problem. Employment eligibility verification is good business and it's the law. More than 288,000 employers, large and small across the U.S., use E-Verify to check the employment eligibility of their employees, with about 1,200 new businesses signing up each week. In Iowa, roughly 1,600 employers already use E-Verify. Last year, about 129,000 queries were processed here in the state of Iowa. I know one of the concerns is the accuracy of the E-Verify program. I'm happy to be able to report that over the years, the accuracy has increased substantially. You will be able to find, if you research the issue, uh, statistics from a few years back showing higher error rates than present. On the website, at present, they report that 98.3% of the inquiries automatically confirm employment eligibility of the employee. There are 0.3% who have initial system mismatches later confirmed as work, work authorized. Now that's three out of every 1,000 queries. And if there is a mismatch, the employee then has eight business days to come in and state their intention to appeal the mismatch. And if they do that, then the employer is obligated to work with them to straighten out the error if there is an error. Now, I think most all of us know that it's illegal to hire uh, unauthorized aliens. But I think we also know that that law is not enforced very well by the federal government. <laughs> the purpose of House Law 2156 is to set up a system where the state can help enforce this law. Mr. Chairman, there are amendments, and I think it would be best to take them up before I go ahead and describe the process set up in the law. Are you wanting to speak to 3584 initially? I think that would be best. Uh, 3584 is purely a correction in the numbering of the bill. When the LSA originally drafted the bill, they made a mistake. Caught it and pointed it out, and so I have this amendment to just correct the numbering of the bill. It doesn't change anything substantively. Uh, Mr. Chairman, those are my own remarks on the end. I want to clarify because I see some faded books on the table. This amendment was passed out of last meeting, so you should have a copy of it. If you do not have it with you, you might check your reference for me. So those, those are my opening remarks on the amendment. Any discussion on that amendment? Yes. To my copies that reviewed that amendment, it is 
purely a, a technical one, and I don't have any concerns with that. Good thing I Okay. Uh, any further discussion on that amendment? Seeing none, he moves the amendment, short form. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed the same. You want to take it for a second after this time, Representative? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, this is Amendment 4128. This is a more substantive amendment, and it has been drafted to address concerns that have come up along the way as we discuss uh, this bill. And we have tried to address the concerns that have been brought to our attention without meeting the actual purpose of what we're trying to accomplish with the bill. One of the changes has to do with uh, the, the initial bill required the county attorneys and attorney general to investigate complaints. And they correctly pointed out to me that they do not typically investigate. Investigation is done by sheriffs, police, and local law enforcement. So we have removed the sections of the bill that had to do with the county attorney and attorney general investigating complaints. And that is now clearly to be done by the county sheriff and local law enforcement. Another change has to do with posting information regarding uh, the proper, the legal complaint form which this bill authorizes, uh, a database on uh, actions that have been brought through the courts and a list of employers that are participating in the program. That initially was to be done by the Attorney General, but they pointed out that uh, they're already stressed uh, resource-wise in what they're doing. Uh, we did discuss it with the Secretary of State, and they stated that they wouldn't be able to uh, perform those functions. These are, as I said, basically uh, posting information on their website. Another change has to do with investigation of complaints uh, in terms of what discretion uh, the investigating officials have. Uh, the initial bill was fairly mandatory that if they received a complaint, they shall investigate. We have changed that because there are circumstances and concerns, for example, of uh, frivolous complaints just thrown out there to harass a particular business. And even though uh, there is a provision in the bill that states it's a misdemeanor to file a frivolous or false complaint, we felt that we could improve that still more by giving law enforcement discretion in those cases where there is an anonymous complaint or where the complaint is against a particular company but is not uh, name a specific individual. So in those cases, we are changing the bill to allow law, allow law enforcement discretion. They may investigate under those circumstances. If a complaint is lodged against a specific named individual, then they still shall investigate. And keep in mind, the investigating is primarily checking the records uh, with the employer and or be verified to see if that particular person is authorized. Um, I guess that basically summarizes the, uh, the changes that are made in this amendment. Those are my opening remarks. Any discussion on the amendment? Seeing none, um, I recognize the representative for his comment. There's closing comments on the amendment. Uh, just moving the amendment. Just moving the amendment. Short form. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed the same? No. And we are now, do you want to take up that third amendment that was handed out today, representative, this time? Yes. Uh, and I recognize you for amendment 4197. Oh, this is, yes, I'm sorry, Representative. Thank you. Go ahead, this is yours. Thank you. Uh, thank you. I've looked over this bill, and I have a number of concerns uh, regarding it, among which uh, 
is the uh, provision that these actions, which are uh, state actions, should be um, are uh, relegated to county authorities. Um, and uh, I think it has some concerns on uh, issues such as property taxes and things like that. What I'm proposing is based on the idea that I think, first of all, the state has an obligation to have their own housing order um, regarding these issues, number one. Um, and number two, that the responsibility in that regard uh, applies with the uh, Department of Administrative uh, Services. Therefore, I'm proposing a strike after amendment that uh, would put in the verification requirements for state work and for state contracting as a substitution for the bill that has been brought before us by Representative Garrett. Thank you. Any further discussion on the amendment? Yes, Representative Garrett. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, Representative Smith, but as I read your amendment, it would completely take out the provisions having to do with private employment. Yes, this would be a start with uh, the state getting its own self order. However, the provision in Section 4 of the amendment would deal with contracting and therefore uh, have implications on private employees. Private employees are contract with the state. Correct, yes. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I would ask the body to resist this amendment. It completely changes the thrust of it. Uh, we're really trying to get at all violations of the law, not just possible violations <coughs> Excuse me. by the state or people contracting with the state. And uh, so I would ask that we resist representation this way. I thank you for your interest in the subject and bring this amendment forward. Any further discussion on this particular amendment? Seeing and I recognize Representative Smith for his closing comments on the amendment. Thank you. Uh, I would again uh, encourage the body to support this amendment. This is a much more measured approach, and it's the uh, state of Iowa ensuring that our house is in order uh, before we look elsewhere. As Representative Garrett talked about, the E-Verify program is something that all employers in the state of Iowa can use now, um, and um, it is a program that if they choose not to use it, they suffer the consequences of those actions. Uh, his bill goes far beyond uh, the implications uh, here of just use of the uh, verification, e verification system with enforcement of this by local law enforcement, which will raise property taxes here in the state. My approach is a more measured approach, it deals directly with state employment and with contracting with the state, and that's where we need to begin. Thank you. I move the amendment. You move the amendment. Short form, okay? Yes. Short All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed to say? No. no. Uh, the chair is in doubt. Uh, the clerk will call the roll. Representative Anderson. No. Representative Baldwin. No. Representative Wolf. Aye. Representative Lons. No. Representative Gaines. Yes. Representative Carey. No. Representative Hagan. No. Representative Hagan. No. Representative Collins. No. Representative Hagan. No. Representative Massey. No. Representative Olson. Aye. Representative Olson Lamar. Aye. Representative Olson T. Aye. Representative Pearson. No. Representative Rogers. No. Representative Smith. Aye. Representative Swain. Aye. Representative Taylor. No. Representative Jenkins. No. Representative Russell Cushel. No. Speaking of the bill as amended with the 
the amendments that we've passed. Uh, the bill does require Iowa employers to use the E-Verify program uh, that will be a complaint form generated by the Secretary of State it will be available on the Secretary of State's website and uh, I don't know if there will be other ways you can access it if you don't have access to the, uh, to the website. Uh, what it does, again, it prohibits an employer from hiring unauthorized uh, aliens. And the importance of that is it protects people who are obeying the law. It protects a person who's in business, who obeys the law, hires people who are legally authorized to be hired. It protects people, whether they're uh, native Iowans, whether they're legal immigrants, whoever they are, that are looking for a job who under the present circumstances may have to be competing with someone who will work for substandard wages, maybe substandard conditions, which is, I don't think anybody wants to see that. Uh, so it, it protects law-abiding people and uh, helps to level the playing field so that everyone is on the same basis and you don't have to violate the law to be economically competitive uh, in your particular business. The, uh, the remedy for a person or a business who violates the law has to do with uh, suspending their business license. And license is a very broadly defined concept. Uh, and on the first offense, it is uh, suspended until the business, the business is required on a finding that they have a violated law, required to terminate illegal, uh, undocumented aliens, and to sign an affidavit that they will not hire such folks in the, in the future. And they are on probation then for three years. Uh, there are provisions, and, and on a second violation, they can't lose their, their license. And you might say, why is that the remedy? And the reason is, the federal law specifically preempts states from doing anything else, from employing any other kind of remedy. Uh, the federal law specifically says other actions are preempted except married licensing. So that's what we're doing. And I do want to point out a, simil a bill similar to this uh, in the state of Arizona has already gone through the court system, the federal court system, and the U.S. Supreme Court has already declared that uh, this kind of approach is legal. So we don't have to worry about that. Uh, I know there are a number of bills or, or uh, laws in this area that are being challenged in the courts. And so uh, that was one of the things that got my attention. By taking this approach, we know we are not in violation of the federal law. Uh, I do want to also point out uh, the employer who uses the system has a defense. If a mistake's made and it turns out that employer hired someone that they shouldn't have, as long as they use the system, they have an absolute defense to any court action. Uh, so that, I think, is important also, even though the error rate is very minor, as I mentioned. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, well, that, that concludes my opening remarks. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and ladies and gentlemen of the committee. I don't argue that we don't need comprehensive immigration reform, but it doesn't start at the state level. This is a national issue. Here in the state, we can't determine who is a citizenship, who is a citizen. We can't enforce our borders, and we don't deport undocumented residents. We need to insist and work with our colleagues in Congress to change the law at the national level. 
the piecemeal approach that we use only pushes unscrupulous employers and undocumented workers further underground for a cash economy. I am disappointed that this has made it this far in the process. We need to encourage only national reform on this issue. It's the only way to solve this problem. I will not support this bill. Thank you. Thank you. If we want to start enforcing federal immigration laws on a state level, then we should be willing to fund that enforcement at the state level. This bill does not do that. It pushes all of the costs of enforcement onto our local governments, our local county attorneys, police departments, and sheriff's offices. This bill creates a huge unfunded mandate and because we are apparently unwilling to put our money where our mandates are, I'm going to have to be a no on this version of the bill. I tell our federal colleagues on both sides of the aisle, but kicking the can down the road, um, do you believe that this law, uh, or this bill, the PK law, would uh, decrease labor exploitation of some people in some island communities? I think it absolutely would. Uh, one of the problems we have right now is uh, some employers hire people that, even knowing that they're illegal, because that is, we would infer from your question, they feel like they can pay some standard wages, maybe they've got some standard working conditions, and they feel like that uh, the workers not likely to complain, uh, and uh, they're truly exploiting them. And under this bill, we hopefully, if we say the worst of what I hope it will be, uh, we won't allow that kind of situation. And plus which, it will give employers confidence in hiring people so you are legal immigrants, who are legally entitled to work, and they will be able to have confidence that they go through this system, uh, that that person truly can be hired, and so they won't have to be hesitant about hiring somebody that they might otherwise be worried about because they'll know they're legal and, and they're not going to have a legal issue. So yes, good point. Thank you, Representative. Representative Smith. Thank you. Uh, I'm wondering if Representative Garrett would yield to some questions. Sir. Sure. Thank you, Representative Garrett. Uh, first of all, in your opening comments on the bill, you focused on the e-verification part of this. You did not focus on uh, the enforcement part of this, that this would be enforced through the uh, amended by the uh, city police and by the county sheriff's departments in our counties. I made a statement in response to that that I felt that that would be an increase in property tax here in Iowa because those are the entities that pay for those services. Uh, are you in agreement with me that this will be property tax dollars that will be paid for the enforcement of this if your bill passes and becomes law? I would say theoretically that's probably true to some minor extent, but I, I want to point out, as I mentioned, uh, Nine, over 98% of the inquiries that go through the system come back valid and no problem. Uh, the local law enforcement will rely on information from the E-Verify website to determine whether there's been a violation of the law or not. They are prohibited from making, them their own, making a decision on their own. They can only rely on the information in the uh, federal system. So while I understand your point, I think in practice what we have found is that those kinds of complaints are very, very minor. In our subcommittee meeting, uh, some ladies from Manpower testified, and they stated that they had run 3,500 queries through the system. They usually verify all the time. Two of them had come back as not valid. And I think the point that they are uh, showing us is 
if people know that a business uses E-Verify, they're not going to even apply because they know they won't pass. So I, I understand your point and your concern, but I think in practice, we're just not going to be inundated by hundreds and hundreds of companies. Okay, so that begs the question, uh, which isn't the question that I'm going to ask you, but uh, is this a solution in search of a problem with that? Uh, I was in Fisher Controls the other day uh, looking, and uh, they had signs there in place that they use E-Verify. And uh, what you're talking about, that local police can use E-Verify, there's nothing that restricts them from doing that currently. Is that correct? <coughs> right now, E-Verify is voluntary among right. private employers. Yes. So you, you cite an example of somebody who is using it, as I pointed out, a number of Iowa employers already use it. Right. They're not the ones we have the problem with. The ones we have the problem with are the ones that are not using it. And not all of them, some of them. But, and, again, but again, the penalties apply whether that employer used E-Verify or not. And the issue that I'm getting at is, again, your focus today is on use of the E-Verify system. My concern is the amount of dollars that this is going to cost local property taxpayers with the uh, sheriff's departments and the police doing it. Do you have an idea of how much money that this will cost local governments? Well, as I just pointed out, in practice, you have very few, uh, if, if, if the employer is using E-Verify, you have very few uh, negatives, uh, in other words, uh, invalid responses, responses of, in, of an invalid or unauthorized uh, alien that come back because they don't even apply knowing that that business uses to be verified. So if it was used by everybody, uh, as I said, I don't think you would have large numbers of complaints that would be burdening the sheriff and the police department. Now, the point one is voluntary and not everybody's using it. We know that the system is being abused, but uh, that's what we're trying to address is to uh, require Iowa employers to use the system. And just by doing that, we're going to eliminate the biggest share of the problem. Representative Gary, do you think it's possible that the Marshall County Police Department may have to investigate 10 of these cases in the year's time? I have no idea what the number of what the number would be. But keep in mind, too, investigating means checking the records to see if that person uh, is authorized and be verified. The Marshalltown police have to go by what they find out at the federal level. They can't make a judgment themselves as to whether it's a violation or not. Right, and then they can check that now. But under this bill, then they have the responsibility of taking action for the federal government. If they find a violation. Yes. That's true. And that's that's the point because as we said, the federal government isn't enforcing the law very vigorously. Okay. We want to have them out. So so we're we're moving this to a state obligation. And then why do we move it to a local government obligation? That's typically the way the laws are uh, uh, invest violations are investigated and prosecuted. It's normally done at the local level by the sheriff, the police department, and if there's a violation, the county attorney files an action. That's all of our, uh, many, many, many laws in the state are handled that way. It's very few of them that are actually investigated and prosecuted at the state level. Well, but, but federal laws are usually investigated by the district attorney, the, the U.S. attorney for the northern part of the state and for the southern part of the state, correct? They can. They can. And okay. we want to help them out. Thank you, Representative Garrett. I will be supporting you over here. Thank you. Thank you. Representative Rick Wilson. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'm with Representative Garrett Neal. Sir. Just so we're perfectly clear, your bill does not apply to uh, independent contractors. It does not. If you hire an independent contractor uh, to come and show the walk or whatever, it does not apply to that. that you don't have to check out that person. By 
advice to employees on and I told you early out that I was involved in sponsoring the bill several years ago, but it was a bill that uh, you'd like to verify, but it was the state of Iowa had the obligation and it was with contractors that would employ individuals working on state projects. And we've had that discussion every time. Yes, we yeah. have. It, it would cover uh, the employees of those contractors. In other words, the contractor would wouldn't visit the state of Iowa or anybody else. It would apply to the people that they hire if they are employees as opposed to Yes. But with that said, the bill that I was involved in was of much more limited scope. And much as Representative Smith has, has indicated, keep our own house in order, have it at the state level first. But having said that, uh, I think this topic is still worthy of discussion. We're now in a funnel week. There needs to be a vehicle that's been, that makes it through a committee should there be further discussion. Uh, I will support your bill as amended, but I won't support your bill as amended on the floor without further review. Well, uh, we've made changes already, as I described here, and uh, I'm personally speaking myself. I'm open to ideas and suggestions for improvements. I obviously can't guarantee that I would be in favor of everybody's proposal, but uh, we want to make the bill as good a bill as we can to. Uh, do what's right for our items, and so I'm happy to discuss it with you. Any further discussion? Oh, uh, yes. Representative Keith. Representative Gary, you the other Sir. Okay. Uh, does your bill allow for a complaint to be anonymous? It does, and in that case, the sheriff or police owner uh, is charged with the investigating, has discretion. They may investigate, or they may not, but it appears frivolous or <coughs> without merit. They have discretion then to decide whether to be pursued or not. But they could respond, they can to respond to an anonymous complaint. They can, and that's not uncommon in other areas of the law. I mean, if you hear anonymous uh, tips or Anonymous statements from time to time. We want in other areas. I'm just looking at what employers might feel might be antagonism coming from perhaps a competitor to, you know, uh, the lack of him if he doesn't want to, that employer doesn't want to step up and identify himself, so he makes a phone call to the sheriff and, you know, I think, da da da. And so, that there's that kind of thing. I, I don't think the business community is really comfortable with your, your anonymity here. I think it could create some problems. Talk to me about the records of the employee. You have a person applies. Can you verify and the person fails? You have hired that person in the first place before you even verify. That's the way the law works. So that the, the negative response from the verify will be permanently in your employee records. Is that correct? You are required to keep the records for a period of three years after that person leaves your employment. Under the law, that's the federal law. I guess what I'm concerned about is the response to the complaint by the sheriff or the enforcement agency. Will they be checking just that employee that's in the complaint, or are the records open for all of the for all of their records? You understand what I'm trying to get? At? Yeah. Um, there'd be nothing that would prevent them from uh, investigating other. Further, if, if they found that a violation had occurred, it might, they might, and they have discretion, but that might be a reasonable, uh, it might be reasonable under those conditions to say, well, if, if they hired this person who was legal, 
they could have some others that, that would be up to the law enforcement. I, I guess, you know, I understand the reason for verifying, e verify, I'm not, you know, it's to prevent illegal people from being poor. But at the same time, it also could create a situation where it is a collection of daily responses for e verify, thus allowing the sheriff to know if these people still live in the community that they are illegal and then can start a hunt and bring these people in and deport them. Well, would that, that be a result of what you have here? That would have to be done in the federal level. The local court doesn't have. But they could call ICE, they could call ICE and say, hey, I just found a half a dozen illegals and they still live in our community. They could. They do that, do that now if they but, these are, this, but this will be in the record, as you say. It will be a record. <coughs> I just, you know, I, I think I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to support this to move on, but there's got to be some changes before this. I think I'm bringing up some, I'm bringing up some points here. That if you want to have an investigation on a specific employee, if that, if that complaint comes in, name the employee, and then I think that it's fine. But to open up all of the records and start to go through the whole person, the, the employer total records over the past three years and see if there's another name you did and go on a witch hunt for these people, I don't think I'm going to do that.